Okay, so what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to show you how to load your simulator onto your machine. The instructions are here in the description. However, we need to get them loaded onto your computer. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to click the Mil V 16.1 zip and it will start to download down here on the bottom of your screen. Once it is there, we will click it to open it and it's going to take us to our download files. So what we will do from here is we need to copy. So I will right click. I will come down to the copy. I will copy this and then it's going to tell me that I need to load this into our sample pictures. We will need to copy and paste it into our sample pictures area for it to work correctly. Okay, so if I come over here, because I'm already in my file, I have copied it. I will go to pictures. I will go to sample pictures. And then I will paste into my sample pictures. From here, I am able to successfully run my program by opening the file. And if this shows up with the Haas symbol right here, I know that everything has loaded correctly. If I click this and it wants me to import the file or export the file, that means you have done something wrong. You need to go back and look at the instructions. At this point, I'm going to open up and run my simulator. When this pops up, everything should look just as it's showing. It should look just like on a machine. Things I usually do is I open that and I usually move this out of the way so that I can see information that's in this area right here. So just like on a machine, I will hit reset to get rid of my servos and I will power up and restart the machine. As you can see, some of the items do change. It does home out the machine. And what I will do is I will show you guys how to load a program onto the simulator. Now, obviously, looking over here, I have the sample safe start program <clears throat> that is already loaded onto that zip file. That's fine because if it's there, you have it, there's no more clicking to be done. However, if I want to load a program into my machine to see if it works, I'm going to show you that. So I've made a program on my computer, so I will minimize this, and I will minimize that, and I have this file right here off to the side. This is the verify file, okay? So if you have a program and you want to see if it's correct, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this file and I will put it into the USB. So just like walking out to a machine, taking your USB with you, your USB is right here. So if I click on it, you'll see this safe start program that we have in the machine already that's on that USB. So anything on this USB, this machine can get to. So before we do that, I want to open this file and I want to see if there's anything in my program I need to change before I try and run it. Looking at this, I need to make sure that I do not have any variables in front of my X location. I also need to make sure that all of my X and Y's are capitalized. So that way my machine doesn't have any errors when it goes to load the programs. <clears throat> Another thing I'm looking for is I have a space right here in between my X and my numerical value. I want to get rid of any spacing that may be in these areas that will help prevent any alarms in my code. I will look at the Y variables as well. Now keep in mind this space in between the numerical value and the next access change is going to be okay. That's not going to hurt anything. Okay, even if you have them next to each other, that still will not hurt anything in the simulator. By default, the simulator will put a space in between that numerical value and the Y variable. So as I come down, I can see that I have another Y with a space and one more. Another thing I want to pay attention to 
is if I do not have a decimal right there, that is going to be 3 tenths. It's not going to be correct and it will show up in your simulator. Make sure that you have your decimals in the correct locations. Also, having a negative in front of the variable will also send out alarms as well. Having nothing on the line will also send out alarm. The good thing about using these simulators is when you try to load the program into the simulator, it will tell you what is wrong. So for this example right here, I'm going to put everything where it needs to be. And I'm going to come up to the top of my program. And I'm going to change this just in case I need to. That way if I load up 3, it won't interfere. Because if I look up here, Safe Start Program is a 2. With that being a 3, they're not going to interfere. However, if they do interfere, I will show you how to overwrite the current program in the machine. So with this all changed, all my edits are changed. I have no doubt in here. Everything looks good. We're going to exit. We're going to save. That means that this file is now updated. Now I need to put this file on my virtual USB. So I can copy and paste it, or I can drag and drop it so that it will copy to the USB. I can now minimize or exit this to get it out of the way. On my simulator, if I come down to my Haas keyboard, I will go to List Program. By going to List Program, it will take me to this screen where I go to my virtual USB. Using my arrows to go left or right, once I'm on the tab that I want, in this case I do want the USB device, I will click the down arrow. If you'll notice, my Safe Start Sample program is there and my Verify program is still there. So at this point, I will hit the down arrow, I will highlight the program that I want, I will click F2, and then I want to put this program into my memory file because I want to run it on my simulator. So I will simply hit the Enter key, or I can hit right Enter. So in this case, I'm just going to hit the Enter key on my keyboard. And if you look over here in the middle, it says, do I want to overwrite? Okay. At this point in time, I'm going to hit yes because I want to overwrite the program that's in there. So if I make an edit to a program, so I don't have to keep renaming the program to fix my errors, I'm just going to overwrite. So I will hit the Y key on my keyboard. So if I look in my memory, I can see that 2, my test program, is in there. So at this point, I'm going to go into Memory, Settings, and then I'm going to hit one more time so I get in the graphics. So if you look here, Settings, Graphics. If I click it once, I'm in Settings. If I click it twice, I am in Graphics right here. This is the screen that I want to be in. If you look down here, I have some graphics hotkeys. Execution speed. I like to take my execution speed by pushing F3 and lower it down to 10%, usually for my first run. If there are any errors, I will put the machine into single block, which I'll show you in just a second. So I like where it's at. I can hit cycle start, and it will run my program. Now, if you notice, I can't see the top of my part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out or in or move my zoom window. So I'm going to push F2 on my keypad, or I can click it on the simulator, F2. If you're not sure what to do, you can click F1. So this is all my instructions. So if I click the page up, you can see in this small window over here that my page is getting bigger. Okay, well what if I want to move it? Well, I can use my arrows over to move the window where it needs to be. So I'm going to move it up. I'm going to center it. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. And then when I'm done, I'm going to hit the Enter key. Okay. When zoom's done, I hit right Enter. 
Um, this one I'm going to hit my inner key on my keyboard. My part will disappear because now I can hit cycle start again to run my program. Now, as you can tell, my zoom window has moved. At this point in time, I want to go ahead and single block my program and look for errors. So I'm going to put an error into my machine so I can see where the error is at. So I'm going to reset my program. So I start at the top, memory, settings, graphics. I'm going to hit cycle start and I'm going to have an error. So I'm going to go th so far through my program and I have an error. Now my Haas simulator will tell me that I have an invalid I, J, or K, but what's missing is I'm missing a radius value right here. So at this point in time, I can check my alarms, and this is telling me what the alarm is. So a lot of times this will help you. If it's on a line number, if I hit alarm message again, down here it will tell you what the error is and what line of the code it is. So what I'm going to do, in case I couldn't find it, is I'm going to turn on single block. So by clicking single block, each one of those is a single block. I'm going to go through my program one at a time. So single block, I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to come through it. Now, once it's on the highlighted line, it does not mean that it has executed that line. If I hit single block one more time, or the tab button on my keyboard so that I can progress my program, you'll see that it progressed right there. So nothing's going to happen. The highlighted code will be executed. So execution, execution, so on and so forth. So now I'm coming up on that alarm. Okay, so now I've got this alarm that's about to come on. It cannot do it. Okay, it's already looked ahead and says that there's an alarm going on. So that's what's happening. So at this point in time, I'm going to be able to reset my program and I can go through and fix any alarms that I have. So at this point, you are able to successfully use your simulator to find any problems. So any questions that you have, please refer to this and go from there.